This is English shorthand dictation number 154 and the dictation speed is 120 volts per minute. Ready? Start. The Hall of Justice operates solely based on pieces of evidence and allows no opportunity for biases in its working. However, according to sources, 6% of the convictions are false. A significant reason for this could be the inclinations caused by humans while assessing these attestations. There are a lot of theories which suggest the replacement of human judges by robots. They are also upheld by the unvarnished truth that machines would make evidence-based verdicts rather than subjective. On the contrary, critics challenge the ethicality of artificially intelligent robots and believe that its introduction in courtrooms could be disastrous. We have to discuss the applications of artificial intelligence in the judicial system of India, the proper way of introducing it, and the shortcomings and the advantages of it. Currently, the Supreme Court of India is using artificial intelligence for translating its judgments into several vernacular languages for a mobile application. However, the Chief Justice of India is fascinated by artificial intelligence and believes that it could be of significant use in the judicial system. He thinks artificial intelligence can prevent the delay in the delivery of justice by working on the repetitive mathematical and mechanical parts of the judgments. Regardless of the serviceability offered by artificial intelligence, the Chief Justice of India made it explicit that artificial intelligence will not replace human discretion. He claimed that artificial intelligence can only aid the proceedings but cannot take important decisions. We know that the government of India is interested in the deployment of artificial intelligence in the judiciary. But let us understand how they can be installed in the judiciary of the world's largest democracy. Artificial intelligence, like in numerous other fields, has made its entry into the courtrooms. The correctional offender management profiling for alternative sanctions is a practical example of artificial intelligence in use. The criminal judges of some states use this to predict the defendant's likelihood to offend. This technique provides a score from 1 to 10 to the defendants on 137 factors like gender and past criminal records. However, the accuracy of this technique can be questioned as it is prone to machine biases while dealing with white and black Americans. Likewise, India can also make use of artificial intelligence in judiciary besides merely translating verdicts. One application of artificial intelligence in the Indian court rooms could be the replacement of traditional court reporters. These reporters need to hear different types of court proceedings and make their respective transcripts. However, the hectic job leads to typing errors in some transcripts. Advanced voice recognition softwares can write error-free transcripts very rapidly and save a lot of time in the courtroom. Artificial intelligence can provide its contribution to the judicial process by playing an advisory role. It can help in assessing the facts and thereby providing a statement for the judge to consider. Artificial intelligence can draw data from previous cases, as mentioned by the Chief Justice of India, and reduce the human task of reading different laws. Emotionally intelligent robots can be present in the court to report facial expressions and body language of the accused in criminal cases. The judge would still have the power to determine whether to consider the statement or to deny it altogether. 
from the previous example of offender management profiling it can be ascertained that artificial intelligence softwares are still not very accurate in passing predetermined judgments if artificial intelligence is given the power to pass the final verdict unanimously many innocent people would be punished even for a crime that they are unlikely to do there would be no hope for mercy as machines will not work on emotions artificial intelligence would penalize people based on their past and current records this would not allow future improvement in an individual's mindset artificial intelligence programs are computers after all which work on a given code this leaves room for immoral manipulations now imagine the supreme judicial power and the decision of a person's life rest with artificial intelligence softwares it would be a catastrophe considering the probability that artificial intelligence will pose a fundamental threat of autonomy it needs to have some sort of human intervention there has to be a system to ensure that the goals of artificial intelligence coincide with human goals the idea behind this is to safeguard the final power of decision making with humans our constitution delineates both the powers and responsibilities of institutions and those who govern them this institutional edifice must be protected if not those maintaining the institutions by their actions are likely to cater to their enervation and eventual decimation today we are seeing that happening before our eyes we are ourselves to blame for not raising our voice and calling to attention the malaise that has set in our fundamental rights are set out in part 3 of the constitution under certain circumstances they are subject to legislative curtailment equality before the law is a fundamental constitutional premise prohibiting discrimination on grounds of race caste creed religion place of birth and sex subject to the caveat that the disadvantaged may be empowered by acts of positive discrimination other rights fundamental to our existence including freedom of speech freedom to form associations to move throughout the territory of india along with the right to carry on any profession trade or business are subject to regulation they need to be protected from unreasonable legislative and executive interference today our lament is that constitutional courts obliged to uphold these rights have in recent years often been lethargic and occasionally remiss in protecting citizens from legislative and executive excesses any matter before the court apart from pure personal interparty disputes involves individuals and the state we can assume that in that equation the state represents power and the aggrieved individual is relatively powerless in this context the largest litigant in this country is the state as also the most powerful the role of a court in deciding such disputes must not just be stated but assessed in the context of its performance in recent years there is no point in having a judiciary in which the judges do not have a liberal mindset a judge with a conservative disposition is acceptable but not an illiberal judge such a judge should not find a place at least in our constitutional courts a judge with a statist mindset ends up helping the powerful and failing to protect the weak this does not mean that individuals should be protected despite their open flouting of the law it only means that courts should scrutinize the exercise of power by the state on the touchstone of reasonableness and that the extent of its exercise of power is proportionate to the outcome sought to be achieved the court must not allow it to be misused to cripple individual freedoms a judge who accepts statements by the state without adequate scrutiny does a disservice to his oath of office 
द एक्शन ऑफ द पावरफुल मस्ट बी स्क्रूटिनाइज टू एंश्योर कंप्लायंस विद लॉज दैट आर अनरीजनेबल एन अनरीजनेबल लॉ अप हेल्ड बाई द कोर्ट इट सेल्फ अमाउंट टू डेनीग्रेटिंग द फ्रीडम्स वी चेरिश लॉज दैट प्रेज्यूम द गिल्ट ऑफ ए पर्सन दैट अनफेयरली शिफ्ट द बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ दैट प्रोहिबिट द ग्रांट ऑफ बेल अनलेस द कोर्ट बिलीव द पर्सन प्रोजिक्यूटेड इज इनोसेंट आर लॉज दैट आर एक्सफेसाई अनरीजनेबल